So with the 5th year anniversary closing in, I thought it'd be fun to take a look back at the characters we got this last year, and see which ones are the community's favorite. Click the link in the description below to vote on your favorite character to have come out of the 5th year of the game. Hello everyone and welcome to the top 10 power characters on Bleach Brave Souls. As always, this list consists and leaves out a ton of powerful characters. They can't all make it in the top 10. And of course, depending on what you prioritize, opinions may vary. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. Now we're starting off the list with a Can't Fear Your Own World version of Nell, specifically the Beyond Resurrection one. Now this Nell is a very unique character. She's got a really high attack as well as Bruiser at 80. And while it is odd that a character with a really high Bruiser and not Flurry is on the list, Nell more than deserves it. This is because every attack in her normal attack string causes Nell to lunge, greatly improving her range on her normal attack, despite not having long reach, and letting her clear quest a lot faster than other normal attacking characters. This also makes her harder to hit, and it means she's one of the best and fastest characters characters to take when autoing. All of Nell's attacks have a chance to inflict debilitating weakening, and she's very likely to do it thanks to her strong attacks 2 and 3. Her strong attack 2 is a vortex move that surrounds her, doubling as a shield while hitting multiple times, and her strong attack 3 is a vortex move that gathers enemies in one spot before hitting them one final time. Perfect to set up a normal attack, and useful for inflicting weakening. They also gave Nell points, meaning she doesn't stagger and her strong attacks are guaranteed to go off unless she's frozen, paralyzed, or killed. Nell's also really good at PvP. Her vortex moves are likely to inflict weakening, her lunging normal attacks make her harder to hit, and likely to hit more than one enemy with an attack, and her poise means she won't stagger. She's honestly one of my favorite characters to ever come out in this game, and her unique fighting style make her a blast to use. Now, Nell may have the better attack string, but Yoroichi definitely does a lot more damage. She's got a really high attack as well as a normal attack damage link, Bruiser at 20, Flurry, and Poise. On top of that, she's got a boost move strong attack 2 with Enhancer that boosts the attack, defense, and focus of the entire team by 33% pushing her attack to over a thousand. Now with the exception of that strong attack too, all of her attacks have a chance to inflict debilitating paralysis, and she's twice as likely to do it with her normal attack thanks to Flurry. That said, she's got pretty standard strong attacks after that, a lunge move strong attack 1 and a full screen strong attack 3. While pretty useful for inflicting paralysis, they're not so useful for damage, since she's got a pretty low SP. Now like Nell, she's pretty good in PvE and PvP, thanks to her Soul Reaper Killer. She can not only deal a lot of damage, but also enhance the team's stats. And thanks to her being a Yoroichi, it means she's got multiple flash steps, so her specials are basically useless against her if you know when to dodge. While I will admit that Nell is technically faster in PvE, Yoroichi definitely does more damage, and on top of that she's a support character. It's not often that I put so many high attacking characters in the list together, but here we are. At number 8, we have Riruka. Riruka has a really high attack as well as flurry and poise. She's also got bruiser at 20 and a damage reduction link of 16%. Now Riruka can inflict debilitating weakening on all of her attacks, but this is particularly useful for her strong attacks 2 and 3, which are basically identical to Nell's. It's a vortex move strong attack 2 and a hybrid vortex move strong attack 3. Both of them are really likely to inflict debilitating weakening, and they're very useful in both PvE and PvP. In fact, thanks to the weakening and the damage reduction soul trait, she's actually better for PvP than the previous two characters, since she can tank more hits and deal a really good amount of damage. Now, Ryuko's also got a human affiliation, and right now, there is no enemies in PvE or legitimate threats in PvP with a human killer, so you're pretty safe to take her anywhere. To top it off, she's also got the ability to give an extra 5 tech link slot potions when completing inheritance zone. While this doesn't add to her strength in game, it definitely makes her one of the more valuable characters to have. And 
And from here on, it's nothing but high SP PvE characters, starting with the Thousand Year Blood War version of Renji. Now, while in the past his limited SP would have held him back, the addition of certain accessories we've gotten, as well as Transcendence, has essentially put everyone on equal footing. Now, Renji's a high SP character with Frenzy and Havoc at 20, something you'll be seeing a lot from here on, and his strong attacks have some really excellent range, including a strong attack 3 that's a charge move. Now, while ordinarily charge moves aren't full screen moves, thanks to the Havoc, his charge move is when fully charged, and it actually goes a little bit beyond full screen. It also hits extremely hard. In fact, building him correctly, you can actually deal more damage with his strong attack 3 than you can with his special, at least in most cases, since the special has a chance to instant kill the enemy, and we all know how useful that can be. Finally, we have Renji's normal attack. That's pretty normal up until the last hit when it goes from being melee to range. Now, I will say it is unfortunate for this character that they kind of removed this tail, or whatever the heck that thing was. Anytime he's in a list, I usually get comments as to why their Renji doesn't have it, and the answer is simply because this footage was taken before the tail was removed. Next up is the Thousand Year Blood War version of Toshiro, without a doubt one of the greatest PvE characters to ever come out. Not only does he have a really high SP, but he's also got Frenzy. In addition to that, he's got a strong attack recharge link and strong attacks with insane range, despite not having Havoc. In fact, some of his strong attacks actually have better range than other characters who do have Havoc. Toshiro's strong attacks are also really quick to activate, and the combination of that, the range, and a strong attack recharge makes him one of the fastest characters in PvE. With the right stuff equipped, of course. He is the oldest character on this list, so he doesn't have the multipliers that some of the others do. Still, he can inflict debilitating freeze on all of his attacks, and his special in addition to guaranteeing freeze also leaves the enemy behind with weakened defense, letting you deal more damage to an outfrozen enemy if they were to survive it. Also, fun fact for all you new players, he was once the king of PvP. While he no longer holds that title, he does remain one of the best PvE characters. Next up on the list, we have the manga version of Nemu, who has a really high SP as well as Frenzy, a strong attack recharge link, Berserker at 20%, and Havoc at 20%. Yeah, from here they kinda get ridiculous. Basically, her strong attacks have excellent range and can deal a lot of damage. Her strong attack 1 is a lunge move, her strong attack 2 is a beam move that blasts everything in front of her, and her strong attack 3 is beyond full screen. Nemu's also got a decent attack stat for a high SP character, as well as long reach and bruiser at 20. She's completely immune from being frozen, and she's got an extra sprinter, meaning she's able to the dodge specials easier and finish quests faster. Finally, there's her special, that not only deals an impressive amount of damage, but also grants protection status to any team member alive to see it, bringing them back from the dead if they were to die. We did have to wait a while to finally get this character, but she was definitely worth it. <laughs> Coming in at number 4 is the Can't Fear Your Own World version of Shunsui, who has a really high SP, Frenzy, a strong tech recharge link, Berserker at 20, as well as Havoc at 20. Like Nemu, he's also got excellent range on his strong attacks, and his strong attack 3, while not being full screen, does encompass a bigger area than a full screen move in front of him. But by far his most useful strong attack is his strong attack 2, because it hits twice as much as a regular strong attack 2. It's a hybrid vortex move that gathers enemies in one spot before hitting them one final time, and since it hits so many times, it's very likely to inflict lacerate. Now, while all of Shunsui's attacks have a chance to inflict debilitating lacerate, his strong attack 2 is the most valuable because it hits so many times, and Shunsui has an ability that lets him deal 40% more damage to any enemy that's lacerated. And that's before the frenzy. It also makes his special extra deadly. It's guaranteed to inflict laceration, and he already had a plus 40 devastation. So this means that unless an enemy is immune to laceration or already has another status ailment, his special will always deal 80% more damage. And it'll leave any enemy behind with laceration, letting you deal 40% more damage with your strong attacks and your normal attacks. Honestly, he's just a great character, whose only minor flaw is having a no affiliation killer. Though it is just a minor flaw since no affiliation enemies are becoming more common. Coming in at number 3 is the swimsuit version of Nemu, specifically the newest one, though I guess the resurrection one is technically the newest one. 
It's the one you see on the screen. Nemo's got a really high SP and Frenzy. She's also got Berserker at 20, a strong attack recharge link, Havoc at 20, do you see a trend here? And she can inflict debilitating paralysis on all of her attacks which, thanks to the Havoc, have insane range. Her strong attack 3 is beyond full screen, her strong attack 2 encompasses a very large area in front of her, the equivalent of some other characters' strong attack 3s, and her strong attack 2 is a lunge move with really good range. Honestly, she has what is essentially a perfect kit, and it makes her one of the best PvE characters ever. On top of everything, she's also got a complete immunity to being weakened, and, and this is absolutely true, she's the only Parasol character to have been released this year. Now I'm not gonna lie, Byakuya and Nemu were extremely close for the number 2 spot, since they are very similar. Both have a really high SP, a strong attack recharge link, Berserker at 20, Havoc at 20, and strong attacks 2 and 3 that are essentially the exact same. While Nemu can inflict debilitating paralysis, Byakuya can inflict debilitating freeze, both of which do the exact same thing. And Nemu may be immune to being weakened, but Byakuya is immune to being poisoned. With all that said, there are a few reasons why I put Byakuya above her. For one, he's got a Soul Reaper killer, where Nemu has an Arankar killer. Both are the two best killers in the game, but there are far more Soul Reapers in the game, so Soul Reaper killer is slightly better. Then there's their strong attack 1, which is probably the biggest reason. Nemu's is a lunge move, but Byakuya's is a beam shot, and it obliterates everything in front of him. Then we have the fact that Byakuya's a ranged character, and his normal attack is piercing, which, combined with that debilitating freeze, means that Byakuya's normal attack is more likely to freeze than Nemu's is to paralyze. If I'm being honest, Byakuya would have definitely taken the number 1 spot if it wasn't for one other character. Now before we get to that character, please take this time to click on the link in the description below and vote for your favorite character to have come out in the 5th year of the game. Now here are a few honorable mention characters who are also extremely good characters, but didn't make it on the top 10 for one reason or another. <laughs> あれ全てを無に返すこの力を取る面立てる。無理しえらこ。本ならそろそろ奇跡の時間や。ひっくり返したるわ。挽回。坂島横島発行さがり。Finally, at number 1, we have the Can't Free Your Own World version of Shinji, who has a really high SP, Frenzy, Havoc at 20, Berserker at 20, and can inflict debilitating confusion of all things on all of his attacks. Now, while ordinarily confusion isn't the best of status elements, it's something you definitely want to inflict with Shinji, thanks to his Havoc being at 20 with his ridiculous strong attacks, as well as his strong attack recharge link, you're very likely to inflict it. And once you do, Shinji will be able to deal 40% more damage to any enemy that's confused. While Shunsui previously on this list is able to do that same thing with Laceration, Confusion lasts a whole 7 seconds, as opposed to Laceration's 4. That's almost double the time. Shinji's also got a unique ability that increases increases strong attack damage for any power captain by 20%, and this includes himself, meaning that he starts off with what is essentially a 40% berserker, and it would mean that his strong attacks would deal 80% more damage before frenzy if the enemies are confused. Now let's get to his strong attacks. You remember Byakuya before this? Well it's like a copy and paste of that, except inflicting confusion instead of freeze. And while freeze is admittedly more useful, Shinji's sheer force is what puts him at number 1. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for some more top 10 lists.